This is Top Accolade African News Updates. I am Soibifa Jackrich. Ethiopia's military has awarded the head of Turkish drone company Baykar what has been described as a medal of honor for its assistance in boosting the country's air force during the two-year civil war in Tigray. Ethiopia's army chief handed over the award of to Haluk Berakta during an annual air force show in Bishof 2 near the capital Addis Ababa. Mr. Berakta stated that he was honored to be awarded the medal of honor which is rarely given to foreign nationals. I'm drones are believed to have helped turn the tide in the civil war in the federal government's favor. The conflict ended in November last year after a peace deal was signed in South Africa. The exact details of the award are not clear but it appears to be different from the National Medal of Honor which is normally bestowed by the country's president. African states are increasingly acquiring Turkish drones to fight armed groups. Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda are set to co-host the 2024 African Nations Championship SHAN subject to successful stadium inspections. In September, the East African neighbours were awarded the rights to stage the 2027 African Cup of Nations, which will be the first time in history that three countries will deliver the continental showpiece. The joint hosts will all provide one stadium to host SHAN next year with a fourth venue in Zanzibar. According to Wale's career, the president of the Council of East and Central Africa Football Associations, Kenya, Tanzania and Uganda are yet to officially submit which stadiums will be used to the Confederation of African Football Cup. Next year in September, we have been given the Chan hosting rights in Tanzania, Kenya and Uganda, Karia said at an annual general meeting of the Tanzania Football Federation, of which he is also president. We will ask CAF to group all the four teams of Sikafa in the draw to create a competition between us. Algeria hosted a delayed 2022 Chan in January and February this year, with the finals going ahead with the 17 teams after Morocco withdrew because of a dispute over travel arrangements. Senegal won the tournament which is reserved for players. Residents of the Sudanese city of Wad Madani say the paramilitary Rapid Support Forces RSF have attacked a hospital and have taken over an army base. The area is home to hundreds of thousands of civilians who have fled the violence further north in the capital, Khartoum. It means that, first of all, the RSF is feeling more confident in their abilities, that the war is expanding, and this is a safe haven. It wasn't just a stronghold for the army, it's also a safe haven for the civilians who left Khartoum. So in terms of civilian safety, it is a catastrophe because they have no options. There is nowhere to go, said Dalia Abdelmonem, who is currently in Cairo. There's international concerns that the war, which began in April, is spreading. Over the weekend, the US State Department called on the RSF to seize its advance on Wad Madani. Washington said the group's actions were inconsistent with its stated aim of protecting Sudanese civilians. There are also reports of renewed fighting in the city of Nyala in Sudan's western Darfur region. The former army chief to beat three low-profile candidates with the runner-up security only 4.5%. Leading opposition candidate Ahmed Tantwe had pulled out months before last week's poll, claiming intimidation and violence against his campaign camp. Egypt's fluttering economy and the war in Gaza were key electoral issues. Mr. Sisi, who is 69, first became president in 2014, a year after he had led the military overthrow of his Islamic predecessor, Mohammed Mosque. Mr. Sisi won again in 2018. The victory in the latest election means he will be in power until 2030, which he is barred by the constitution from running again. Under his leadership, huge sums of money have been spent on big infrastructure projects, roads have been expanded and flyovers built, and a new capital costing billions of dollars has been constructed near Sierra, but is barely inhabited. Critics say this has drained much of the country's economic resources and created unprecedented 
levels of debts that have crippled the economy. In the past nine months, the Egyptian pound has lost more than 50% of its value against the US dollar, but the Egyptian economy heavily dependent on imports. The prices of basic commodities have skyrocketed beyond the reach of many households and a black market for foreign currency has flourished. Officials figure show that nearly 30% of Egypt's 100 million population lives below the poverty line. Egyptian opposition groups complain they cannot operate effectively due to a constant crackdown on dissent. Human rights campaigners are also complaining about tight security restrictions. They say it is increasingly difficult to document alleged abuses. That is the size of Top Accolade African News Updates. You can follow us on our social media platforms as displayed on your screen. Happy Tuesday!